Assalamu alaikum everybody. Today we'll be talking about Vibrio vulnificus. If you have missed videos on other Vibrios, the Vibrio cholerae and Vibrio parahemolyticus, be sure to check them out. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. Grab a pen and a notepad and let's get started. Vibrio vulnificus is also a marine organism. It's a gram negative rod as you can see in this picture it's rod shaped bacterium it's a facultative anaerobe it is bioluminescent it is not responsible for forming spores and is the part of Vibrionaceae family. It is responsible for causing diarrhea. It can cause other infections like wound infections and septicemia. Vibrio vulnificus is oxidase positive. It is lactose tamenta and it's flagellated, that's why it is motile. It grows best in 6% salt solution and it thrives in warm waters and low salt marine environments. But before talking about Vibrio Vibrio vulnificus in detail, we should know bacterial classification. Bacteria are further classified into sporochetes, also into acid fast based on acid fast staining, and there's an exception that's the mycoplasma bacterium. Bacteria are also classified on the basis of gram staining into gram positive. We are done with all of them. If you guys are interested, be sure to check out the channel and also into gram negative. Gram negative are further subdivided into cocci, for example, Neisseria, the Neisseria gonorrhea and Neisseria meningitidis and also into rods which are further subdivided into aerobic like pseudomonas, anaerobic like bacteroids and facultative. Facultative are further subdivided into curved which include Campylobacter, Helicobacter and Vibrio which includes Vibrio vulnificus, the topic of today's video and facultative are further subdivided into straight which include enteric and related like E. coli, Enterobacter, Serratia, Klebsiella, Salmonella, Shigella, and Proteus, and into Zoonotic, which are Brucella, Francisella, Pasteurella, and Yersinia, and respiratory, which are Haemophilus, Bordetella, Legionella. Vibrio are further subdivided into Vibrio cholerae, we are done with that, Vibrio parahemolyticus, we are done with that too, and Vibrio vulnificus, that's the topic of today's video. Lecture outline, we are done with the introduction and classification, now we'll be looking at morphology, habitat and transmission, pathogenesis and clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Morphology, Vibrio vulnificus is curved and rod-shaped bacterium, as you can see there. It is pink colored, the reason is it's gram negative. It is an encapsulated bacterium. Bacterium. It is not responsible for forming spores, it is mortile, and it has got a flagella at its one end, and it has got several pili spread all over its surface to help it attach to the host surface. I've got a good news for you guys. Medzokhrov has recently released Parasitology MCQ's ebook. If you guys are interested in that, I've linked it in the description or in the top right corner. This is how it looks like under the microscope, a rod-shaped bacterium, like that one and curved like that one. Habitate hosts. Vibrio vulnificus is responsible for causing diseases in humans. That's why humans are its hosts. And they are found in warm salt waters such as Caribbean Sea. Transmission. Transmission of Vibrio vulnificus occurs while eating undercooked or raw seafood, especially shellfish, for example, oysters, and is also transmitted when open wound comes into contact with salt or brackish water that contains the Vibrio vulnificus. Risk factors are people who handle shellfish, like shellfish handlers, and also the people who have got skin wounds, and people who are suffering from chronic liver diseases, such as cirrhosis and definitely they will be immunocompromised individuals. Pathogenesis. Vibrio vulnificus uses following virulence factors to cause disease. Top one in the list is capsule. Then we've got flagella, then endotoxin and exotoxin. Then it also has got iron. And the last one is type 4 pillus. Clinical findings. Vibrio vulnificus causes severe skin and soft tissue infections, for example, cellulitis, especially in shellfish handlers who often suspect Sustained skin wounds can also cause a rapidly fatal septicemia in immunocompromised people who have eaten raw shellfish containing the organism.
mechanism. Hemorrhagic bullae in this can often occur in patients with sepsis caused by Vibrio vulnificus. Chronic liver disease, as we've discussed, like cirrhosis, predisposes to severe infection. And this organism can also cause gastroenteritis. Lab diagnosis will need samples of feces, blood, and wound scrapings. Then we'll go for microscopy, and on gram staining, this bacterium comes to be gram negative. It is curved a rod-shaped bacterium. It is pink-colored, the reason is it's gram negative. Other tests will go for our PCR, polymerase chain reaction. This is how Vibrio vulnificus looks like in the microscope, rod-shaped, curved-shaped bacterium. Treatment. We'll go for rehydration therapy if needed. Antibiotics, the recommended treatment is doxycycline. The third generation cephalosporins are also useful. Prevention, proper maintenance of hygiene, proper seafood cooking, their proper refrigeration and avoiding exposure of open wounds to brackish or salt water can prevent the occurrence of Vibrio vulnificus diseases. Alright guys, let's do everything in this short table. The organism we discussed today is Vibrio vulnificus. It is responsible for causing cellulitis, septicemia, and gastroenteritis. It is transmitted by eating raw or undercooked marine food and the exposure of salt or brackish water to open wounds. Its hosts are humans, seafood, and salt water. Its diagnosis is based on gram staining microscopy and PCR, the polymerase chain reaction. Treatment will go for rehydration therapy if needed. And the antibiotics that are useful in its treatment are doxycycline and ceftazidine. And that's it for today's video. If you guys have got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below. And and if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram and Twitter with the handle Medzokhrov. And I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, assalamu alaikum.